Good morning and welcome to My S's Early Edition. Um, I'm Terry and I'm from My S Firenze via Baracca and I'm co-teaching today with my good friend Paul. Would you introduce yourself? Hello guys, uh, like Terry, uh, we work in the same school and I'm from Ireland and yes, welcome indeed to the lesson called Imagination. Hmm. Paul, do you think you have a good imagination? I think I have a spectacular imagination. Uh, I, my, yeah, I imagine a lot of things all the time. Uh, we were even speaking about that yesterday in our uh, lesson on based on dreams. And uh, yes, my imagination can sometimes run wild. You what about you, Terry? Well, you did say yesterday that you are a big daydreamer, that you that you tend to lose yourself, just let your thoughts go crazy, go wild when when you're not having to focus on something. I I think I have a good imagination. I I'm trying to write a fiction book in this in this period. I've written a biography of my time in the military, but now I'm actually working on a fiction book. And I have to admit that sometimes I, I let my imagination go and I write. Mm -hmm. And then I read it later and I go, well, wow, I think that's amazing. But somebody else might think, ah, that's just a load of bull. So I end up deleting a lot, but I think I have a good imagination. Was so, your was your experience in Iraq beyond your imagination? Yes, it was absolutely beyond. Probably for worse, of course. I had anticipated some things, but some things were impossible to imagine. Cool. Absolutely beyond my imagination. So Ooh, guys. welcome everyone as you join us, please. Just take a minute and write over in the chat box your name and where you are joining us from. Okay, and all right, Paul, shall we? Good morning, Lorena from Milan. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have somebody at least. <laughs> Yay. So Lorena, we, we rely a lot on interaction with our students and since you, you are the only one to get up early with us this morning. We really need you to to be really active. Give us everything you've got this morning, okay? So, Absolutely. Paul, could, I, could you read the slide for us? Yeah, so it says, uh, talking about creativity and imagination, phrasal verbs and idioms. Cool. All right, so we've got, we've got a lot to cover. What's the difference oh, between What's the difference between a phrasal verb and an idiom? Well, you can explain idioms and I'll explain phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are things that we, well, the first thing you do in the morning is you wake up and then you get up. Uh, so uh, it's a verb and a particle. The particle can be a preposition or an adverb. Um, and sometimes there could be two uh, two two ver words like uh, together, like look forward to. Oh. Um, so you could have a verb and then you can have um, <clears throat> some phrasal verbs that are separable and inseparable. For example, uh, a phrasal verb that is separable could be turn on, turn off, like turn the light off, turn off the light. So you can kind of separate it as well. But if it's an object pronoun, we have to put the it in the middle, turn it off. So they're just kind of some examples of the complexities of phrasal verbs. Wow. And But wake up can also be separated. I wake up, but I wake him up. True. Very good. So welcome Alexia from Reggio Emilia. Um, as we just said to Lorena, there's only a couple of you that are waking up and getting up with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And we really rely on your interaction. So we're we looking do. for your answers and your responses. So Paul just explained phrasal verbs. An idiom is simply a way to say something out of the ordinary mm. in 
a different language. In Italian, modo di dire, which literally translates into way to say. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's a way to say something other than to directly say it. And unfortunately, with, with some exceptions, idioms rarely translate directly in a language. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's an idiom in Italian that I absolutely love, and I have still never found a match in English. That's, conosco i miei poli. I know my chickens. I don't have chickens. Mm. But it really means I know how someone's going to react or what someone's going to do. Mm. So um, in English, we might say, it's raining cats and dogs. It doesn't really mean cats and dogs are falling from the sky because if it did, I would have a house full of dogs and cats. Yeah. So idioms are ways to say things that are not the direct linguistic way to say them. I think, though, personally, although there's no direct translation, I think it's a wonderful part of any when you're learning a language and people, you know, when I remember speaking in Spanish, and I would use a phrase that was an idiom. Um, people would be like, oh, my God, how did you know that? And it just, I think it's, guys, it's a way of just kind of showing your in-depth knowledge of any language. And it's kind of part of, you know, it's part of culture as well of the language. Um, absolutely, Paul, absolutely. And it does make you sound more like a native speaker, the more that you can insert these idioms and phrasal verbs into everyday speech. Absolutely. All right. Fabulous. Well, stretching. Huh? everybody, stretching. everybody stretch. <laughs> Has everybody had their coffee this morning, Alexa? <laughs> Alexia, Lorena, have you had your coffee this morning? Are you ready to go? I have had one coffee this morning, although I think it's going to be a two coffee morning for me. You look quite fresh, though, Terry. You look fresh. Well, thank you. You do too. Have you had your tea this morning? Uh, no, but I just have a bottle of water and I had a cereal before starting. So just getting into the normal routine. All right. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So this is a stapler. It's used for putting together papers. It's used hmm. for holding together a bunch or a group of pages of paper. But I want you to start being creative right now. Can you come up with, oh, phrasal verb, can mm. you come up with five ways to use a stapler except for stapling? It's too early in the morning for this. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I have one. I don't, I don't think it's on the list, but I use it for getting my boyfriend's attention. No. I throw it at the couch next to him when he's staring at his phone and not listening to me. That's not a little bit of a dangerous, no? Like throwing a stapler at somebody. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> throw it at him. I just sort of toss it so that it lands beside him. <laughs> I don't hit him in the head. Okay. <laughs> and, Would you not just very, clap, clap, clap your hand? Like it doesn't work. Like, or but snap, it's a very, very finger. small stapler ball, very small stapler. Okay. So, <laughs> so, Lorena, Alexia, can you help us think of at least five different ways to use a stapler except for stapling? So, Paul, I gave you one. Can you? You had your coffee. Excellent, Lorena. <clears throat> Brilliant. So now, supercharged, let's go. And I apologize that sometimes when you write a message, it, um, there's a time Thanks, lag, man. a time lapse of 30 or 40 seconds after you send mm -hmm. before we can see it. So, all right, imagination, creativity, let's go. Paul, give me one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being honest, Terry. I really like <laughs> five ways to use a stapler without stapling. Like I, I just don't know. Um, okay, all right. Well, Let me describe something, and maybe you can give <laughs> me the word. So imagine that I have just printed two hundred copies of something. Okay? okay, and it's not 
collated. So I still have to separate these into order before I can staple. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to put these papers on my desk to go get my coffee. And I put the stapler on top. Okay. What is it? You're, you're using it as an object to balance the paper or I'm really... To, to, to weigh down, to hold to weigh down. down. What's the word? Weigh, you, weigh down. You are asleep, aren't you? Yeah, I am. It's a paper weight. No idea. Like literally, guys, once again, kind of questioning whether or not I'm a teacher this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Wow. I, I know I'm it's so early. Awful. I'm I tired. Mean, Harry, if so it was awful. another object, for God's sake, like a freaking stapler, like why a stapler? I don't understand. Like could oh, be but... another object. Could be like, I don't know, a cup or um... it could be. Okay, so Paul, don't think about a stapler. Give yes. me five different uses uses for a cup. Okay, um, a cup to drink tea, a cup to drink coffee, um, a but cup. But don't it, it doesn't include drinking. Okay, a cup to put your toothbrush in. You know, maybe in the in in the in the bathroom if you're going to want to brush your teeth. Um, a cup to maybe if your door doesn't close or if you want to keep your door open put your cup down and use it as like a wedge um door stop excellent maybe a stapler as well can be used as a door stop i just it's just it's just now that my brain is working um <laughs> all right lorena alexia come on give us some ways we can use tell us if it's a cup Tell us if it's a stapler. What it else? Could, has... It could be a message, a message of inspiration. Like a cup could have like a, a nice little cute message being like, uh, live every day to its full, you know? So when you wake up in the morning, you can have a, 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 certain, um, a certain phrase that, that r symbolizes your personality. Excellent. So here are some ways that we can use a stapler. All right. Paul, will you read these for us? And then maybe yeah. we will have to explain them as we go along. Yeah, so as a doorstop, as a paperweight, as a, as a weapon, as a bookend, as a nutcracker, as a fake telephone to play with a child. Okay, I didn't think about that. Although it's a bit dangerous. Um, as a <laughs> hammer and as a scrape ice off your hand. Okay, I refuse to tell them that, logically speaking, use it as a fake telephone to play with as a child. That is a ridiculously well, stupid answer. Obviously, you would have to make sure that it's empty first. No, but it's just, it's just stupid. Like, like you're encouraging, like, children are capable of stapling their fingers. I am capable of, of, of stapling my finger. Well, and if you think about it, if they use it as a flip phone, they're capable of stapling their head. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's not use that one, all right? Yeah. All right. So let's think of some other everyday objects that might have, oh wait, so let's finish explaining these first, sorry. Hmm. Alexia, Lorena, are there any different words here that are new? New vocabulary. Is there anything that you would like explained? Now, Paul, I use a credit card or an ID mm. card to scrape ice off my car window. How would you use a stapler to scrape ice off your car window? Um, there's like a metal, a metal part, isn't there? Uh, that you can just... Um, it's hard for me to tell you, but do you see the red stapler in the picture? Um, they have like... I don't know what it is, just that part of the of the stapler, you can use it to to scrape off the ice, perhaps. Okay. I know, yeah, I understand that in this lesson, like, yeah, we can use other objects as um as um being useful. For example, my father used um I don't know how to say this in English, you know those uh, objects you use to clean your ears? Um, he's an engineer, so he's very the 
baston, you know Q-tip. the thing? Q-tip. Yes. Bastone Q-tip. di cotone. Yeah, so for example, my dad's very, very creative in these, in these sentences. Um, he uses them as a, as a way to plug. Like if, uh, how could I show you that? Yeah, the object he used to plug into a wall. He uses one of them uh, somehow and he makes it work. So Lorena asked, Lorena asked us to explain weapon. And tell me if you have something to add, Paul. I said a weapon is something used to hurt someone. A gun, a knife, a rock, um, no. a stapler. No. No, nothing, nothing to add. Like a weapon basically used in self-defense or used as a form of attack. Okay, excellent. So if anyone, as people are joining us, please tell us your name and where you're joining us from. Also on this particular slide, if there is any vocabulary that's new, please let us know. All right, so a bookend, a bookend. I, I have never used a stapler as a bookend. Have you, Paul? No. No, it's, it's not, not very tall, but... <laughs> it depends on this. Like, obviously, some staplers can be very, very small, and they can be useful. Maybe you can just put it in the book that you're reading, like, depending on what chapter you're on. Um, oh. Or is that is that it? A book? That's a, that's a bookmark. Ah, sugar, yeah. A okay. Book, a book end is... So you've got your book on the shelf, and okay. sometimes they slide, right? Ah, Okay. And so a okay. book end holds your books in place. Okay, well, I think in this context, a stapler would be very useful for, for, for that, or a candle as well. I would use a candle as a maybe a bookend, okay. just to kind of keep something like neat on your desk. <laughs> now, I will admit to that I have used a stapler as a hammer to mm-hmm. tap to tack something into a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a nutcracker, now, how do you envision this, Paul? A nutcracker as in you have the nut on the table and you, or you put the nut in between and. I would more smash it like with, with a cup. Um, again, I'm thinking of a cup as an object, but uh, I wouldn't use a stapler personally. But again, maybe a stapler would be more useful because it's, uh, like a cup is more circular and a, and a, depending on the shape of the stapler and you can just go. Ch-ch-ch. I might be afraid to break my cup if I tried to use mm. it as a nutcracker. Yeah, it depends. It depends on how, how you smash the nut as well. All right. Well, I think that Lorena and Alexia understand perfectly all of, all of the yes. vocabulary on. on this page. So. <laughs> Yay. So, so let's go on. Paul, Thanks, would you Paul. mind reading the text? I've got uh, a long yeah. day ahead and I'm trying to save my voice. Me too, don't worry. Okay, oh. so uh, read the text and find seven words or phrases about imagination. So very only very imaginative people can create children's books. That's true. And if you think about it, the world would be very different if J.K. Rowling had not dreamt up the world of Harry Potter. She was daydreaming on a train. Ha <laughs> ha when she first came up with the idea of the Hogwarts Express. The first thing she did was write down all her ideas and she brainstormed some more. She thought of keeping the stories up for her daughter, but seven years later, Harry Potter was in bookshops all over the world. There you go, daydreaming is certainly a way of using your imagination. Okay, what we'd like you to do is just tell us in the chat the seven different words or phrases about imagination or imagining. So we aren't going to tell you, we are waiting for you to tell us in any order, just go ahead and send us those. So Paul, have you read the Harry Potter series? I've seen the movies, but I haven't read the books. And I think, first of all, I should have read the books first. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that if you've seen the movies, that going to the books, there are some minor differences, but they did a great job of following the books. My son um, was a huge fan of the books 
And every time a new book was coming out, we would pre-order it. And he literally would run home from school and wait for the book to arrive every day. And uh, I remember, I don't remember if it was book four or five, but he read it in three days. Mm. He just put himself on a chair every morning. He'd have breakfast. He would only leave his chair to eat and use the bathroom. Well, at least he was obsessed with a book, which is kind of like healthy. Like if it was some computer game or something like that, then that's when the problems start. You know, Actually, like people... now, now he designs computer <laughs> games. So fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but as I said, like, you know, reading is certainly more beneficial. Okay, Lorraine has, Lorraine has commented there, Terry. She says, I haven't read, oh, sorry. I haven't read the books, but I have seen, okay, Lorena, I have seen, because if you're using the present perfect, balance it with the, balance it, you know? I read I, the books, I didn't see the films. I yeah. haven't read the books, but present perfect is really more appropriate because there's still time to read the mm. books. There's still time exactly. to see the film. So present perfect is the correct structure. Mm -hmm. But one thing, and I see this all of the time, Lorena, with a lot of, well, I see this in with every, almost every student. If you use every, ogni, if you use every, the verb, or excuse me, the noun that comes after must be singular. I have seen every film. I haven't seen every film. Okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent sentence, though. Very good. Brilliant. All right. Um, all right. So I'm still waiting to see which words or phrases are about imagination. But, Paul, shall we get started and give them the first yeah. couple? We will. All right. So what's the first one? Um, imaginative, maybe, uh, that is connected to imagine, maybe not, uh, only very imaginative, new words or phrases about imagination, like he is very imaginative, it's the adjective, right. maybe I'm wrong, it, maybe I'm wrong. It, um, it, is a f it is a form of the word, okay. but let's Think about words more that have to do with the act of creation. Okay. Or the act um, of. There's a word there that says uh, dream up. Okay. Dream the up. first one though, is create. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. But I wanted to, I wanted to show Alexia, I've never read the books. And Lorena, never apologize. We are just so happy that you are sharing with us and it's our job to teach. So we're just trying to help clarify the little mistakes that, that we make as we go along. But thank you so much for sharing. All right. Um, so create, what's the next one? Um... Think about, okay. Think about, create, think about, let's see, the world would be very different if JK Rowling had not dreamt up the world of Harry Potter. She, daydreaming. She was daydreaming, great. Came, came up with. Fabulous, two more. Um, brainstormed. And okay. she thought of keeping. All right. So these are different words or phrases that we use to talk about imagination, about creation of something. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Paul and I are not going to help. So Lorena, Alexia, this is all on you. But Paul, shall we read the sentences for them with, without the, the, the answer? Mm, maybe just to make sure that they understand like the differences maybe like brainstorm guys is um for example i'm on the whiteboard and i draw a circle and i use the word imagination 
and then I ask you to think of ideas connected to imagination. That is what we call brainstorming. Um, come up with is basically synonym of invent, okay? Um, create. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, some of them are quite similar. <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, daydreaming, guys, remember, it's when you dream about something um, while you're awake, like you're using your imagination. You're vividly, even though you're awake, you're, you're thinking of something else. Fabulous. Um, Some, okay. something, else, something else I'd like to point out Please? is look at the verb, look at the tense mm -hmm. of these different verbs. Okay. Dreams up, third person. Daydreaming, gerund. Mm. Come up with, present simple. Think about, brainstorm. Thought of, past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. created past tense yeah. so as you read the sentences just tell us number one and which phrase or word you think goes with number one two etc okay so i'll read there how did you mm, the idea of painting the walls in different colors number two terry all right mm, your favorite film why is it so special to you before Picasso, no one ever mm, painting the way he did. J.K. Rowling, mm, a world of magic. Before writing an essay, you should always mm, ideas. Mm. I did not pay much attention in class and spent <laughs> a lot of time. Mm, me too. Yeah, me three. <laughs> uh, do not listen to John. He always mm, crazy theories about people. All right, so <coughs> we are. Paul, oh, don't do that. I'll start doing that. I yawned, excuse me. I just want to. I know. Go. Okay, so help us finish these sentences. So to dream up is like to create, mm -hmm. it's like to think of something new, think about. To, to give attention to something, to think about something, daydreaming, my favorite pastime, my favorite yeah, like, hobby. Alexia, feel free to, and Lorena, tell us, like, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, just try and tell us what you think the answers are. So number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven. And this will help you to be able to use them more naturally, spontaneously in conversation, mm. if you can try to use them in these sentences. So, Paul, when was the last time you brainstormed something? Can you brainstorm alone? Yep. Um, when I was writing my blog about, I like to write blogs. Uh, so generally speaking, before I, before I um, think, of the title, I like to brainstorm what I can write about through my travel experiences. So I Excellent. wrote a blog about Granada, where it was the last city I lived. So. Excellent. Fabulous. All right. So Alexia says number one is dreams up. Hmm. Now, Alexia, it can't be dreams up because dreams up is third person dreams. And this is you. So it's it's second person singular, mm. but keep going. Um, I will say that your answer to number two seems perfectly logical. Yeah, because it's a capital letter as well, and you're starting the sentence. So oh, I, about. I didn't notice that. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Me, I just noticed it there. <laughs> number three. Number three. I understand why you're saying created, but we create a way to paint. We create, um, or he creates, created paintings, mm. as in the plural of the noun, but that painting is the gerund form, so we need a different verb. Number two, Alexia, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's She's trying little. anyway, that's the main thing. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But this also gives us a chance to help to help clarify mm. 
how to use these. So any ideas, Lorena, if you're still watching, any ideas of the answers? I Lorena, you've had your coffee this morning. Come on, join us. All right, so let's look at number one. How did you come up with? Mm. Now, Alexa dreams up. How did you dream up the idea? Lorena, good, come up with. Um, Alexia, how did you dream up the idea? Would be perfect. So your idea of using it is excellent. The only thing is that dreams up is that third person. It's the only reason we can't use it. But if you take the S away, it would be perfect. Number two, Alexia got it. Think about your favorite film. Why is it so special to you? That's excellent. How about number three? Number four created. Absolutely. Um, you're welcome, Alexia. All right. So before Picasso, can you help me, Paul? Before Picasso, so it's going to be past tense. No one ever, <clears throat> okay, so there's only one verb in the past tense, guys. Think, thought of. No. Two. Oh, there's two. <laughs> there's but, created, but we can't I, use created painting. Yeah, I think it's thought of, thought of. I think you're right. All right, so, and the thing is that all of these different words and phrases are so similar. Mm. They're so similar that now we have to look at the tense. We have to look at the noun or the information that comes after in order to know which one to use. Mm -hmm. So number four, created, excellent, Lorena. Mm -hmm. Five, brainstorm, fabulous. Numbers six and seven. Okay. Number six and seven, dreams up and daydreaming. So mm. we have a third person and we have a gerund. We'll give them a second to see if they know. Absolutely. Come on, Lorena. Come on, Alexia. You can do it on the armor. Help us help you. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, Paul, did you pay a lot of attention in class? Um, yes and no, it depended on the subject and the teacher. If I found the teacher interesting, I paid attention. If I didn't like the subject, I always daydreamed of something else. I hated, for some reason, I hated science when I was in secondary school. Uh, I was never interested in physics or chemistry or biology, and I was kind of angry that we were well, at least in what I like about Ireland is in the fourth year, we did. it was only optional to do science, so I didn't do it. I studied history, geography instead. Ah, excellent. Okay. So, Lorena, thank you. Six daydreaming, seven dreams up. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for participating, and, and we, we love it. All right. Up, guys. So, we're not going to do this in pairs. We're going to do this all together. So... Tell us different ways to increase creativity and imagination. This is brainstorming. We're going to do this together. So, Alexia, Lorena, tell, before we show you, tell us some different ways that you can think of to brainstorm ways to increase creativity and imagination. I suppose one so, would be even the type of food that you drink or that you have just to get the your mind thinking, like eating nuts perhaps might help or I don't know. I sometimes think like if you eat certain t kinds of food, it helps kind of trigger uh, your brain a little. Really? I'll have yeah. to try that. Maybe. Verena <laughs> says, close your eyes. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes. Absolutely. Sometimes with our eyes open, we only see what is. And if we close our eyes, we can imagine things differently. That is excellent, Lorena. Thank you. 
Put yourself um, in a in a silent place, I think, uh, or a, a room that is comfortable for you to study. Or you know, you're everybody has that place in their house. So I think I actually believe that I was more creative when my children were young, because. Mm playing with them, I would get down on my hands and knees with them and see things in a different way and see things and they would share things and then from their imagination and then my imagination would just go crazy with them and we would invent the most incredible stories. So I think children help us. I think trying to put yourself back in the mindset of being a child. Absolutely. Or for me, another one is uh, just sitting next to a river under a tree. Um, I just find nature wonderful and it gets, well, that can also be distracting as well. Uh, but I it helps me to kind of write a little bit more under a, under a tree next to a river. Have you ever laid on your back and watched the clouds and seen the different and imagined different shapes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Probably haven't done that since I was younger, but we've got even lots of time to do that now. I mean, one of my hobbies now every day is just unfortunately sticking my head out the window just to catch that bit of sun. And like, I actually like, for some reason, I like watching, watching people. And I like, there's two cats that are like right in front of me and I just like watching the cats. The neighbors know this anyway. So it's not like I'm <laughs> stalking them. They know that I stick my head out the window, so they don't mind. All right, Alexia, Lorena, um, other ways to increase creativity include, oh, spend time with children, my favorite. Mm. Um, listen to music. Oh, Lorena says running. I'm so tired because I can't do it now. Isn't that interesting, Lorena? We are more tired because we can't exercise. That exercise, even though it's tiring, it rejuvenates. It, it gives mm. our body more energy. I agree. Running or physical activity, I find very creative. Fabulous. Absolutely. Paul, will Take you read the rest? Oh, oh. Okay, so spend time with children, listen to music, read, take risks, improvise, and try something new every day. Wow, I think definitely taking risks is um, is something that can inspire you to do new things. Um, for example, taking a risk, when can I give a con? Uh, when I was younger, I was so scared of traveling alone, and eventually I took the risk, and I guess um, it's helped me a lot develop as a human being. So I took a risk by traveling alone. That's kind of helped shape the person I am. Interesting. Improvise. So improvise to do something different at the spur of the moment, at a particular mm. moment to do something very differently. For example, think about that stapler at the beginning of yeah. the lesson today. What different ways, if you had to, you look around your room, your books are falling, your books are sliding, mm. and you want them to stay up, and you look around the room, you don't have a bookend, so mm. you put your stapler there, you improvise. Even like using, if I can show you for a second, this is my nice room, I just, Sorry, I'm just talking about my physical activity for the gym. Uh, so you're familiar with uh, Terry CrossFit, yeah? Yes. CrossFit, yeah, and uh, the jumps. You know, when you jump. Uh, so guys, if I could just show you, you can see my bed there, okay? At least my room is nice and bright. Using that, jumping up and jumping off. <laughs> it's just it's just improvising but it's it's a way of yeah but it's a way of practicing cardio so it's better than nothing right absolutely oh. absolutely all right so excellent yeah in these days i am having to improvise ways to fill my time mm. so i'm writing more i'm doing jigsaw puzzles i am 
because I cannot, because I'm from America and my family is there and I can't have dinner with them, which was always special to us. We mm. improvise, we do Skype dinners or yeah. Skype lunches. They have breakfast while I have a mid afternoon snack or lunch. Nice. So I think that's become a, a, a new thing at the moment. People are improvising. They're doing, they're having their, imp, they're having their aperitivos um like the typical italian way i have my friend uh she's australian and she's living in milan at the moment and she can't see her boyfriend but they're like um what i really think is really nice is they both um dress up like if they were going out and they sit down and they they do like um an aperitivo they have an aperitivo together which i think is pretty cool and i'm sure many italians are doing that as well well, it's my birthday next week and okay. I have already I have already scheduled a dinner with my family. That's lovely. They'll have lunch while I'm having dinner and we'll be together over the distance. So yeah, it's we're nice. having to improvise a lot in these days. Yeah, but that's still kind of like at least we're lucky at the fact that we do have technology to allow us to oh. stay in contact. Otherwise, God help us, you know. Oh, absolutely. All right. <laughs> imagine, so, imagine no technology. Imagine um, not having. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But at the same time, it's a blessing and a curse. But that's a different lesson yeah. and a different story. So, yeah, exactly. So now we're going to look at idioms. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about idioms, a different way to say something. So mm. we want your help. Um can you finish the idiom? So on the left, you see one through six, and on the right, the cat, blank, moment, okay. the clouds, the box, thoughts. So can you help us finish these idioms? Paul, would you read how they begin? Yeah, so he has his head in, curiosity killed, think outside, my mind went, I had a light bulb, a penny for your mm. I love my favorite idiom is the first actually I think well, it's that's brilliant be that's because you're a daydreamer yeah but also I think it's uh it makes sense to me you know sometimes sometimes an idiom you're like raining cats and dogs makes no sense but uh but you wait, know, wait 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 it, it makes sense it, the That's rain it? is so the rain is so heavy. Cats and dogs are heavy, so it's heavy rain. But, Fair enough. All right, that's my imagination. Sorry. Oh, what I well, may, no no no, but maybe I could associate that as well with like a dog chasing after a cat and like the kind of the speed or the. Mm. Also, well done. All right, so Lorena is on it. She says number one. And Alexia is doing it as well. And Alexia, well done. So Lorena, number one, he has his head in the clouds. Perfect. Curiosity killed the cat. Hmm. Alexia. I've never heard that one. No. No. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Um, think outside the box. Excellent. Way to go, ladies. Hmm. Um, okay. How about four, five, and six. Hmm. So, Paul, while they are finishing these idioms, yeah. can you can you better explain number one? Yeah, he has his head in the clouds. Uh, I actually said this to one of my friends recently um, who wrote a comment on Facebook saying that it is necessary for everybody to be in lockdown, which is something that I can agree with. But... His comment was like an overgeneralization of the whole world in general. And I said, why should we be the people that suffer? Uh, of course, we're doing it for the right reasons. But I said to him, your point is very, very generalized. So I told him, you've got your head in the clouds, which basically means you don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> you have a vague idea, but you're, you're, you're not putting much imagination into what you're saying. Mm. Now, see, when I think of it, I think kind of of the opposite. I think of okay. someone who is always daydreaming and is okay, not, yeah. not grounded in reality. I think it could do with daydreaming or just not 
not being directly on the point, you know? Um, okay. But, All right. So both agree. ways. Mm -hmm. All right. So curiosity killed the cat. My, <laughs> mother, my mother always used this phrase. My sister is less than one year older than me. So it was almost like having twins in the house. And excellent. Alexia, Alexia number four, blank. Um, number five, moment. And number six, thoughts. All right, mm. I'll get those. But curiosity killed the cat. Have you ever watched a cat? They have, have to know everything. They put their mm. head in a box. They walk along a ledge to see what's outside. They are the most curious animals. So when my sister and I were young, we would always go searching for the Christmas presents mm -hmm. under the beds, in the top of the closet, everywhere. And my so it's a way to say, don't do that. Don't be so curious. Don't put your nose where it doesn't belong because curiosity ah. kills the cat. Understood. When you say don't put your nose, yeah, that when you when you use that, I I would I would understand it more. Cool. Right. So think outside the box. Don't think in such a normal closed way. Mm -hmm. My mind went blank. I was trying to describe something and the words were not there. My mind was yeah. blank. Would you explain the last two for us, Paul? Uh, I had a light bulb moment. You can correct me on this one, Terry. Uh, again, I'm a bit unfamiliar. I'm thinking like you've just thought of an idea. Exactly. Like a, um, a penny for your thoughts is kind of like, ah, mm, I have an idea for you. A penny for your thoughts or mm, maybe not. Or maybe I have a suggestion. No, it's it's kind of the opposite. If if a friend is, if you're talking with someone mm -hmm. and they're suddenly silent and you know they're thinking about something, but they don't want to say, you say to them, a penny for your thoughts. It's like, I'll, I'll give you a penny if you tell me. It's like, please tell me mm. what you're thinking. Please okay. tell me what you're thinking. Okay. So blank... Lorena, blank means empty. So yeah. imagine a chalkboard, a blackboard, and nothing is written. It is blank. This piece of paper is blank. Nothing mm. on it. For example, when Terry asked me a question this morning about the stapler, my <laughs> mind was blank. I didn't know. It took, it took me about three or four minutes to um use my brain and then terry was kind of helping me <laughs> brainstorm ideas by using different examples so she was teaching me actually extra things well and you taught me yesterday we teach so each I, other i think actually the stapler now in a, in a weird way was actually a good idea because it makes sense now with this lesson making your imagination all right, so the last thing I want to do, I want to make sure that you really understand these idioms. So can you just tell us quickly in the last ooh, two minutes, the last two minutes, just like one and A, B, C, D, E, or F, two and the same. So Paul, can you read number one for us? He has bad results in school because he always has his head in the clouds. Um, okay. Number two, you shouldn't ask so many questions. Curiosity killed the cat. To solve this problem, uh, we need to think outside the box. My mind went blank as soon as I sat down for the exam. MacGyver had a light bulb moment and used his paperclip to unlock the door. And you look worried. A penny for your thoughts. So here we have some examples of how to use the idioms mm. and their meanings. And I apologize, we have one minute left. So we're going to start yeah. giving you the answers. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, what's number one? Uh, he has his head in the clouds. Um, what are you thinking about? I can think of anything. Tell me the answer, Terry. My mind is blank. It's D. It's to daydream. Okay. 
All right. You shouldn't ask so many questions. Curiosity killed the cat. It means being too curious will end badly. Think outside the box. Uh, to think differently or in an original new way. My mind went blank. Can't think of anything to say. Light bulb moment, a sudden realization or idea. And Penny, for your thoughts, what are you thinking about? Okay. And with that, um, I want to thank you for joining us, Lorena and Alexia. Thank you so much for your interaction. That was fabulous. Okay. And Paul, I'm going to let you close out for us. Yeah, guys, as I said, stay, f stay tuned. There are more web uh, webinars coming up um, to whatever you deem appropriate to your level. Ci vediamo pronto. Ciao. Oh.